Hello everyone! Welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we will talk about critical theories of international relations. But we also would like to invite you to watch our previous videos about other theories of IR. You can just click on the pop-up video on the corner of the screen and start exploring the very short introductory videos about the theories of international relations. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get into the critical theory. Critical theory has its roots in 1920s and 1930s Western Europe. The reason why critical theory was developed in this period and on this location is in fact related to Marxism. At this time and place, Marxism was forced to come to terms not only with the failure of a series of attempted revolutionary uprisings, but also with the rise of fascism. Critical theory has been developed out of the works of the Frankfurt School. The scholars of the Frankfurt School, as left-wing German Jews, were forced into exile by the Nazis' rise to the power in the early 1930s and much of their creative work was produced in the United States. Critical theorists have been dealing with questions concerning international society, international ethics and security. Critical theory attempts to challenge the prevailing order by seeking out, analyzing and assisting social processes that can potentially lead to a liberating change. But how does the critical theory aims to do that? The answer is by developing a theoretical understanding of world order that grasps both the sources of instability in a given system and the dynamics of transformation processes. You may know some of these leading members of the first generation scholars of the Frankfurt School. Max Horkheimer, Theodor Adorno and Herbert Marcus. After them, a subsequent generation of scholars has taken up the legacy of the first generation scholars and developed it in innovative ways. Their innovative interpretation of the world was mainly focused on the role of media and what they call the culture industry. They were also unsure about the Marxist statement that whether the proletariat in contemporary society does in fact embody the potential for an emancipatory transformation. Because, according to the scholars of Frankfurt School, with the rise of mass culture and the increasing commodification of every element of social life, the working class has simply been absorbed by the system and no longer represents a threat to it. Critical theorists emphasize the significance of culture and ideology in perpetuating certain kinds of social relationships or challenging them. In opposition to orthodox Marxists who claim that society can be understood scientifically, critical theorists argued that all knowledge is ideological, meaning it's all intimately connected with social practice and the pursuit of interests. Moreover, our theories and practices are so intimately connected that it is meaningless to see the theory and practice as distinctive realms of human activity. Critical theory is concerned with possibilities of human emancipation from oppressive forms of social relationships. In this regard, society and state have a certain degree of autonomy in life, but it is possible to liberate humans from this oppressive form of autonomy to a certain extent. For instance, critical theorists believe that while capitalism is an exploitative and oppressive system, it does generate certain opportunities for social change that oppositional groups can use to their advantage. Some critical theorists like Jürgen Habermas argue that class is not the only form of domination or oppression in capitalist societies. Nationality ethnic origin, race, and gender can also be indicators of social inequality and exclusion. These theories concentrate more on questions about culture, bureaucracy, the social basis and nature of authoritarianism, the structure of family, and concepts like reason and rationality and theories of knowledge, instead of focusing on the economic base of society. Finally, critical theorists have made their most significant contributions to the literature through their explorations of the meaning of emancipation. 
Traditionally, Marxists explained emancipation as the process of humanity gaining ever greater mastery over nature through development of ever more sophisticated technology and its use for the benefit of all. But early critical theorists argued that humanity's increased domination over nature was bought at a very high price and the mindset that is required for conquering nature slips too easily into the domination of other human beings. For critical theorists, emancipation had to be conceived through a reconciliation with the nature. So, that brings us to the end of this very short video about the critical theory in IR. We will continue with Max Horkheimer as one of the key representatives of the critical theory in our next video. If you like this video, please do not forget to like it. And for our upcoming videos, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.